We all love to swear, whether it's as a kid you call someone a poopy head, or even now you drop a couple cool F-bombs. But why do we swear, and is it really as bad as everyone says it is? Swearing while in acute pain is almost a reflex for people, but it makes sense because it's been scientifically proven that if you swear while in pain, you can tolerate more of the pain. In fact, there's even a scientific term for this phenomenon. It's called lalochesia. Oh, cock show the balls! Jesus, Mary and Joseph! Cock show the balls, Jesus, Mary and Joseph! Cock show the balls, Jesus, Mary and Joseph! In an experiment where participants had to submerge their hands in ice cold water, those who were allowed to swear were able to keep their hand in the ice cold water for two times as long as those who weren't allowed to swear. But there is a catch. Those who were only allowed to swear in moderation were able to keep their hands in the ice cold water longer than those who were continuously swearing. Basically, there's actually a way in which you can build up a tolerance to lalochesia. The more you swear, the less it helps with pain tolerance. I was so fucking shitty and fucking dumb. <laughs> oh, fuck! Oh, fuck! Fuck! It's not working! When you look at brain scans of people as they swear, there's increased activity in the amygdala, which is the part of the brain linked with memory and emotion. Also, dropping a big old F-bomb can increase your fight or flight response. Swearing has also been shown to increase your heart rate and sweat production, which are physiological responses in line with increased adrenaline. Fuck! That was some good adrenaline. Swearing actually activates the emotional part of your brain, not the part of your brain involved with language processing. So, swearing isn't related to language even though you might think that you are a Shakespeare of profanity. Yeah, well you are a corn on the cob, duster of cock, building your buildings and assholery your way to the top, your chodas, your mamas, your go and then you know that you screw off! The fact that swearing is more linked to emotion than language makes sense when you think of this specific medical case. A patient with global aphasia, essentially the inability to speak following a stroke, was found to only be able to say simple words such as yes or no. Interestingly, when that patient was in a situation where they were frustrated or angry, they were able to say "God damn it" and shit. And this shows you that swearing is linked to emotion. Ms. Brown, your husband may never speak again. <laughs> oh, God damn it, Sarah! And of course, swearing is more common in relaxed settings. Swearing may even help encourage and facilitate social bonding as it signals to the group that you are all comfortable with each other. Done the project. Ah, poopy. Did you just say poopy? Yeah. Fart. Crap. Dick breath. Ha ha, Jonah. We're friends, guys. We're friends. Most common English swear words like those in North America or Britain are derived from sexual activity, parts of your body involved with procreation like your penis, or bodily functions. Interestingly enough, a lot of French Canadian swear words are derived from Catholicism as the church and religion are a huge part of defining the French Canadian culture. Bonjour à tabernac! So it seems that swearing has stemmed from things that were or maybe still are taboo. There's something very exciting about saying these forbidden words. Guys, I'm gonna say something super taboo. No, don't do it. Oh no, I'm gonna do it, no. okay? I'm gonna say it for the Voldemort. No. Ah! <laughs> Diagon Alley. Swearing has been shown to relieve pain, increase social bonding, and be a lot more complex than language itself. So let us know in the comments below what are your most creative swear words. If you want to see some real creative swearing, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat where I let that profanity fly. And make sure you subscribe for more of these ASAP Thought videos. Peace!